Good afternoon, everyone. Snowfall on the border between El Salvador and Honduras in Central America. Heavy snowfall in Peru during the middle of the summer last month. Staying in Peru, volcanic activity in El Misti restarting after approximately 325 years. UV radiation levels pushing over 20 last month in Lima. And as we go forward into the grand solar minimum, Riots on the streets here when they tried to raise the bus fare from 14 cents up to 34 cents. If it's creating this much civil unrest over a few cent rise in bus prices, what's going to happen when food doubles, triples, quadruple, or 10 times the price? The news headline reads, Snow falls in border between El Salvador and Honduras. There's been quite a cold wave pushing down through Mexico and Central America. This is El Salvador on the map for you here in Central America. If we look at the latitude, it's around 15 degrees north latitude. It's even more south than Cuba. This is on the top of El Pital. It's a mix of snow hail that fell on February 10th, 2016. Taking a look at regular weather patterns for El Pital, you can see it's ranging pretty much around 12, 13 degrees, but this was a bit cooler. There is some more cold coming up on the 20th of this month. Should be dropping down in temperatures again between 6 and 9 degrees Celsius. Digital media site ElSalvador.com. Several stories running about the cold. Dozens of visitors enjoying the cool weather. El Nino bringing cooler weather. Four cold fronts have rolled through in the last month. Meteorologists and environmental ministers talking about how to protect yourself from the cold. And just a rundown of the other related cold stories. You see there's at least four there in the El Salvador news media. Cold fronts decreasing temperatures. And it's in the news so much, it's really got to be an amazing cool front to make the news coverage over the last month at least four times. The meteorological department also predicts that this cold weather is going to continue through February and all the way through March. Now rain is common this time of the year and temperatures between 12 and 10 degrees is common. But back in 2004, there was also sleet that happened in that same exact mountaintop area in El Pital, but it wasn't nearly as dense as it was this time. A surprise for the tourists who are up there, this is all the frolicking area they had in the ice up there. And you can see the density of it compared to the photo of this time is quite a bit different. Jumping south of the equator into Peru. Last month, Peru experienced heavy snowfall. But before we even start, you need to realize that December in Peru is the middle of the summer in the southern hemisphere. Much like July would be the middle of our summer in the northern hemisphere. So think about it as snowing in the middle of July. Snowfall of about 10 centimeters, which is approximately four inches, covering different population centers as well as areas in the highlands there. Very unusual, very rare. As well as at the same time, a few days ago, the Peruvian volcano El Misti, remaining dormant for 500 years. The last recorded eruptions from volcano discovery Coming into 1787, 1784, or back to 1677. Some of the more major eruptions were 1454, 1350. You know, this is pushing seven, 800 years ago. Interesting how with the magnetosphere decreasing and an expected increase in volcanic activity of volcanoes that have not erupted in 400 years, this one comes online here this last week. These are the volcanoes in Peru. You can see there's a couple showing activity. This will soon be the third one here that goes on and changes color into the orange. Just need to wonder how long it will be before a couple more of those start erupting as well. And digging through the uh, Peruvian media outlets, I came across this interesting UV radiation level rise in Lima. Now, if you look at the red, that's around 20 to 25. Four. In the U.S., we think a heavy day is 13. Why don't you try doubling that? And that's the UV they're experiencing down in the coastal area there of Peru. A bit closer up here so you can really see the image. Peru raising its key interest rate for the fourth 
time since September. This brings their interest up to 4.6%, but their target rate was between 1% and 3%. So something has gone drastically wrong where they need to continue to raise rates far beyond their target to try to control the economy. At the same time, protesters absolutely furious, fighting with police, riots, tires on fire, pelting stones at the police because of the bus price rises from 14 cents up to 34 cents. Now, if there's this much tumultuous activity because of a few cent rise in bus fares, can you imagine what's going to happen when their food prices double, triple, or come up into the 10 times today's price range when people can't eat? You see that this economics is already affecting their livelihood of them being able to get to work or not, and that much of a dig into their savings of that bus fare increase. This is our future as well in the developed nations in about four years when our food prices rise drastically. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. Rare snows in both hemispheres occurring right now. It's up to you to decide if you think the grand solar minimum is actually starting to show itself.